right, let us understand some of the things we are going to be doing. In fact, 30 days is a lot of day. So from day one all the way to day 30, I have something very huge for you. And for you to really understand what I mean, for day one, we're going to be looking at introduction to Python, of course, which is today, you're going to be learning how Python work. Like, what is it about? And what makes it so special? Who are the companies using it? And how you as well can leverage on it? Now, once you understand how Python work, the next thing we're going to be looking at in day two, we're going to be looking at print commands. In other words, you're going to be telling Python to print something for you, right? Because, I mean, once you have Python installed on your system, you should be able to do things and tell it to do certain instructions or give you certain instructions so that it can execute. In day three, we are going to be looking at data type, right? When you look at data type, you're going to be understanding some of the things that you need to use in order for Python to really understand that instruction. We're going to be working with some of the logic, conditional statements, and so many things that will really change your life at the end of the sections. But when we are done at day 25, one thing we need to do really is to build an application with all the knowledge that we've gained so far. In other words, we're going to be using Python for web. And the framework we're going to be using is Django, right? Now, Django is something that we use to write application on the web. Don't worry if you don't know how this thing works right now. But the major thing really is you just need to follow along and every day we're going to be using maybe around 10 to 20 minutes of learning, just that little dedication can make you become a programmer. Not just a programmer, but a backend programmer in the next 30 days. So I love to see you and I love to see things that you do at any point when you create any project. Please and please and please make sure you share them on your social media and do's. And don't forget to tag in Stingtop. Of course, if we see you, we're going to share what you've shared. And the truth is, the only way you can stay consistent is when you share some of these things as you do them so that people can begin to perceive the new knowledge you're incurring. And as a result of that, opportunities can come your way at every point in time. Now that you understand what is at stake, let us go through what we need to do today, which is introduction to Python. And we're going to be understanding certain things. So let's dive into it. Yes, when it comes to Python, right, you need to be really excited because, you know, you're about to learn one very important technology that is hot and making impact in our society today. In fact, companies like Google, companies like Facebook, companies like Netflix are using this great tool to create application. Instagram under the hood run on Python. That is really, really exciting. So. I mean, it's something that once you know how to use it, you can do so many things. But let us understand the history of Python. Now, Python was first used in 1991, and it was created by Gudon Varosin. I mean, he is the one who invented Python, and ever since then, it has been something that the world has really benefited from. And I want to right now to also benefit from this language. So looking at some of the things you can do with Python, why do people really love to use Python? The truth is it is a tool that gives you several options, right? With Python, you can choose to either become a data scientist or you can choose to want to venture into machine learning, artificial intelligence, or you can even go for web development, which is what we are going to be doing in this lesson. So our focus is going to be Python for web right? Before you can venture into any of those skills, you need to be able to understand the foundation, how Python works, the functions, the data type, logic reasonings, and some of those things, the data set. All of these things are things that we are going to be covering. So you don't have to be bored at any moment. If you have any question, just go to the question sections and ask your question. Of course, you can also reach us at any of our social media handles or our support center in order for you to get help at any point in time. Like I said, and I'll keep repeating it, as you learn, try to share your work, make sure that people get the best of what you're learning at every point in time. Now that you know what you can use Python for, let us understand what you can use to run it. Now for you to be able to use Python effectively, you need an environment to run it. 
Understanding the environment that Python can run successfully is another thing. You can think about this this way. Whenever you see an ocean, a very wide ocean, right, it can allow you to do so many things. If you're the one that likes to fish, you can go into the ocean and fish, right? If you're the types that also like to maybe swim, you can go there to swim. But the truth is, there are several things that can be done in an ocean. So there are several things that can be done in Python. But for us to get this done, we need an environment. If I want to go get some fish in the river, I need a ship or I need a canoe just for me to be able to sail and get some things, right? Now, what do we need? We need an environment in Python and you also need an editor, right? When you install Python for the first time, it comes with a Python shell, which allow you to write some codes. But as your project gets bigger, you need a more independent environment to write some of those things, and we call it IDE, Integrated Development Environment. When you talk about IDE, on a very shorter notice, you can look at it as a Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word in its nature allow you to format your text. You can bold some sections, you can make some section bigger than the other, coloring. That's the exact thing that the Integrated Development Environment allows you to do, right? And one of it is PyCharm. You can use PyCharm, you can use Visual Studio Code, and you can use Anaconda. But in this lesson, we're going to be using PyCharm. Well, you can choose any other IDE, but I just prefer to use PyCharm. So in the description, you can see the link to download PyCharm and also to download or to install Python on your system. Now, one thing I must say is at every point, if you have any questions or something or any error, that you really want to understand how it works, just copy a section of that error and paste in your Google search, and you see lots of people who have encountered such issue. But in the course of the lesson, we are going to be seeing several issues and we're going to be solving several things together. Well, it's going to be something fun for all of us. And thank you for joining me in this 30-day journey. And I can't wait to see what you can build. And I'm going to be seeing you tomorrow.